Hey guys and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any future techie how-tos, builds, review videos and everything that we've got planned in store for you. But today I want to talk to you about my Corsair K70 Mark II Low Profile Keyboard. Why are these names so long? Anyway, this beauty is my keyboard. It's my daily driver. I use it for everything. Coding, writing scripts, editing videos, the whole works and I use it for many hours a day. And I wanted to tell you guys about my experience with it compared to like Razer, Logitech, SteelSeries and other keyboards that I've used in the past. So let's get into it. Before I take you through my loves and my hates of this keyboard, I've got to let you know a few things that you should be aware of if you are picking up one of these for yourself. This is a low profile mechanical keyboard that sits shorter and actuates quicker than most other mechanical keyboards. It has decent spacing between the keys due to the slim keycap design, which I personally prefer having quite chubby fingers, as you don't have to push as directly downwards onto the keys to avoid neighboring keys. The K70 Mark II Low Profile Keyboard comes with either Cherry MX Low Profile Red or Low Profile Speed Switches. The Reds actuate at 1.2 millimeters and the Speeds actuate at one millimeter. But honestly, this is such a minute difference that you would never see any performance gains or feel it or notice it at all. And when I tried them both out in the store, the reds and the speed switches, they felt no different to me at all. So ultimately I ended up picking up the red switch because it was $10 cheaper. And why not if you can't see or feel a difference? So if you've seen my other videos, you know that I will praise things if they're implemented well, and I'll be very outspoken if they're implemented badly. And I think that you guys appreciate that honesty. So here are four things I love and two things I hate about the Corsair K70 Mark II low profile, other than the name, the multimedia controls. Once you have dedicated multimedia keys, it's so difficult to go back and Corsair has done this 100% right. The scroll wheel is massive and intuitive to use, allowing you to flick the volume up or down when someone interrupts you or really fine tune the level without ever looking at the keyboard. Directly below are the multimedia keys and this is a fantastic placement for them as it follows Gestalt's law of proximity, which is very important in product. The colors and the lighting. We all knew this would be one of them. The lighting is stunning. It's even across all of the keys with no hotspots shining out of the aggressively designed font. The biggest benefit is that the lighting is almost infinitely customizable through the IQ software, which is kind of easy to use. I would definitely have to create a separate video on where IQ shines and also where it's just broken from a product perspective. But let me know in the comments if you would like me to make a separate video on that. Moving on, the lighting profiles can also be saved to the device. So you can take it to your friend's house and still be set up the way you want. It's fantastic to see that as an inclusion. For me, I have set up this intertwining pink and purple effect that pulses on occasion, which reminds me of a Covenant ship from Halo. Corsair really knows how to implement RGB goodness. The typing experience. Not only are these switches shorter, but the keycaps are too, making the typing experience quite different from a traditional mechanical keyboard. It kind of reminds me of a crossover between like a scissor switch and a normal mechanical keyboard. As I mentioned before, my chubby fingers tend to hit neighboring keys a lot less frequently. This is particularly relevant whilst gaming when I'm being less accurate with my fingers and just trying to hit that key to make sure I get that kill. This coupled with the smooth keycaps and the pleasing sound profile makes for an amazing typing experience in my opinion. Let's listen. So choosing to spend this amount of money on a keyboard is one of the most difficult decisions in my opinion because you could literally spend hundreds of dollars and never like it at all. And personally, I didn't actually think that I'd like the K70 Mark II low profile. I would never have even considered buying one. But I went to my local tech mecca, Micro Center, and I tried out every mechanical keyboard that they had from every major manufacturer. So I had a really good blind test experience between all of the major mechanical keyboards out there. And realistically, this keyboard chose me. I didn't expect to like it. I didn't expect to really enjoy typing on it. But when I did, it just felt so much more comfortable to me. So I can't express enough just how important it is to try out the keyboard before you buy it. So my last love for this keyboard is the wrist rest. And that might be a bit controversial to some. This isn't typically a widely loved wrist rest, especially comparing it to say like the Razer wrist rest. Those things are plush and beautiful. And as soon as you put the edge of your palm on them, it just feels so comfortable. But the K17 Mark II Low Profile, 
I find that the angle is just perfect for me. I can game and type on it for hours on end. And I find that the soft rubber texture to it is extremely comfortable over long periods. So moving on to the hates of the keyboard, number one has to be quality control. I've seen other reviewers on YouTube doing a sound profile typing test, and as soon as they hit the spacebar, it goes from a nice pleasing tone to a sharp and deafening rattle. I've tracked down the cause of the issue to be the small metal bar that lives underneath the spacebar, and I believe that I can fix this with a small amount of light adhesive, but realistically, it's not my job to do that on a $150 keyboard. Sort it out. Additionally, over by the volume adjustment, there's a wonky side piece. Again, I think I can fix this with some light adhesive, but it's not my job at $150. Sort this shit out. And my second hate is actually the cable. Although it's nice and braided, it just sort of hangs there in midair if you have any sort of cable management underneath, just because it's so thick and difficult to train. This really should have been a USB type C cable, and I wouldn't have minded losing the USB 2 pass through. Yes, you heard me, USB 2, despite what Corsair says. I've tested this with the USB 3 hub and it has dramatically worse transfer speeds. I don't mind having the pass through there. I don't personally use it, but I understand that it is a really convenient place to put a thumbstick if you need to transfer a file. However, who's transferring files using USB 2.0 in basically 2020? F***ing stupid. So thanks for watching my video on my four loves and two hates of this keyboard. I don't want you to think that the keyboard is a bad keyboard. I genuinely love it. I think Corsair have done a very good job, but there's very rarely going to not be things that I passionately hate about a product. It's almost impossible to get something 100% right. So go to your local computer store and try out every keyboard that you can. This one or another one might actually surprise you, but if you're ready to buy it now, I'll drop a link in the description below. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos and get subscribed if you want to see more in the future, I guess. Otherwise, like, comment, share, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.